live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, Herman students are treating the discovery of PFAS chemicals in their drinking water as a learning opportunity. Plus, a solution may have been found to keep ambulance crews rolling in Washington County. And brewer officials are asking for public input as they plan for future development. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for watching us on this Thursday morning. We'll have those stories and much more coming up. But first, we're going to start with the weather. And um, it doesn't look like a terrible day. It looks like we could see maybe a little rain, maybe a right. little wintry mix later on. But the temperatures are going to be up there again. But yep. no major concerns today. That's the good thing. Absolutely. Devin Biggs has all the details. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your Valentine. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. A winter weather advisory is up for the northern ends of the state until about 9 a.m. because of accumulating snow. That make roads a little bit slippery from time to time as well. A few advisories also further down to the south and west. We'll adjust this map just a bit so we can see some of these advisories here. It may not pop up, but there's a small crowd advisory that we're seeing there. And I think that spot right there might be a gale watch that is up right there. So we have gale warnings. We have winter weather advisories, both of these advisories that are up this morning. But for now, we are quiet out there this morning. We're watching clouds. I'll be moving up from the west to the east throughout the daytime period. So increasing clouds will be the general idea is our system is going to be moving in from the west going toward the east. We see it right about in there and now. And so there's not a whole lot just yet. But by later this evening, like literally by about six o'clock or so, we'll experience some rain and snow showers. So late in the day before we enter the night period and our wintry mix gets going. So increasing clouds for its day, literally by about six o'clock or so, that rain is so chance begins switching over to all rain with a few leftover rain showers as we proceed through Friday morning. So the winds will not be a huge deal just yet, but they will be increasing, especially with our system moving in. So Friday could be a windy day, especially along the coast. You are early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So overall, Today we're fine. We're pretty much dry, but increasing clouds throughout the day. Again, by 6 p.m., the precipitation starts. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. A man from Maine has pleaded not guilty to carrying out a machete attack in New York City. Trevor Bickford of Wells is facing both attempted murder and assault charges for a violent attack in Times Square on New Year's Eve. Officials say the 19-year-old had been studying radical Islamic ideology and wanted to wage jihad against U.S. officials and those he thought were anti-Muslim. Three police officers were injured in the attack, including one who suffered a fractured skull. Bickford pleaded not guilty Wednesday after being indicted on numerous charges. A Mount Chase man faces charges following a police search this week. 38-year-old Trevor DeRosiers was arrested Tuesday after police searched a home and found two guns. The search was part of an investigation that began in December when police were called to a home after hearing about an alleged assault. DeRosier was arrested and faces a variety of charges, including assault, unlawful sexual contact, and possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. The family of a man who disappeared from Bangor has increased the reward for information that leads to his safe return. 38-year-old Graham Locker walked away from the Dorothea Dix Psychiatric Center in June. There have been numerous searches and many possible sightings, but what happened to Locker remains a mystery. His family is now increasing the reward to $3,500. They're also sharing information with police agencies in other states along the Interstate 95 corridor in case he somehow ended up leaving Maine. You can find more information by visiting Missing Graham Locker page set up by the family on Facebook. Well, Herman High School is dealing with high PFAS levels in their drinking water. Those are the so-called forever chemicals. But not only are they taking it in stride, they're using it as a learning opportunity. Matthew Jaronsik has more. Due to elevated PFAS levels in the water supply, staff and students at Herman High School are switching to bottled water for the rest of the school year. We got our first round of results in December. We, at that time, had a level that was elevated but not over the limit at Herman High School. At the time, Herman Superintendent of Schools Micah Grant had the choice to retest the water or wait another year. He decided to retest and found out the levels were above the state limit. When this news came out was the math and science teachers at the high school started talking about what does parts per trillion mean and what can the effects of PFAS do to the body. And so they actually started to explore 
um, the numbers and the science behind this announcement. Math teacher Brandon Crocker says he wants to help students gain a better perspective on the issue. It's easy to get lost in, well, where, how does this relate to the real world? Uh, and so kind of putting it back in that context of, okay, there's this amount in the, the water, having that uh, in the context is a, a very good idea. Crocker used a swimming pool example to explain to students that one part per trillion of PFOS is equivalent to one drop of water in 20 Olympic-sized pools. They showed us a presentation in the classrooms, so I realized that it wasn't bad and I knew that our school was going to do whatever is best for us. Now that students have a better understanding, they're thankful Grant retested the water. He's saving us so much because even though it's a small percentage that we're over, he's helping us so much because we wouldn't have even known that this was in our water. The district is pursuing a plan for mitigation equipment that will cost at least $50,000. In Herman, Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Maine's community colleges have ended their COVID-19 vaccination requirement for on-campus students, effective immediately. The Maine Community College System Board came to a, un a unanimous decision yesterday to rescind the vaccination requirement and adopt language to strongly encourage all learners to receive the COVID-19 vaccination and boosters. In addition, Board President David Dagler announced that schools intend to strengthen and expand wellness education aimed at mitigating the spread of respiratory illnesses. Students at off-site locations are still required to adhere to the site's guidelines and are the only exception to the rule. The Internal Revenue Service is recommending taxpayers hold off filing their tax returns if they received a special tax fund or payment from the state last year. The IRS is clarifying whether the payments from the state should be taxed federally or not. According to a statement from the IRS, the rules surrounding these payments are complex. They will provide additional clarity for many states and taxpayers as early as next week. Despite the recent announcement, Thomas Tax and Financial Services owner Bob Thomas says it's business as usual. How I'm treated, I'm treated as non-taxable as far as federal is concerned. I'm not putting on anybody's, I'm saying it's, it's a reimbursement of main taxes. Now, the IRS is also recommending people who've already filed their taxes to not file for an amendment. They will provide guidance for that matter in the coming week. A group of local town officials believe they have found a solution to the state's ongoing EMT crisis. Devin Dagnall met with one to learn more. This may be a model for other communities because it's not just us. It's the whole county plus the whole state actually from what we've been hearing. Town officials from Cherryfield, Millbridge and Steuben believe they have found a solution to what they call the EMT crisis facing their communities. They want to pool their resources and fund a single ambulance corps called the Bold Coast Ambulance Services. According to the Millbridge town manager, Lewis Pinkham, if approved, Bold Coast Ambulance will service all three towns and beyond with two ambulances at separate locations. Pinkham says the plan would not only improve response time, but save all three towns money in the long run. We'll have a lot more control because it will be the towns that's overseeing it. And we'll also get all of the revenue back that is generated from all of the calls. According to Pinkham, the initial estimated cost will be just over $500,000, a majority of which will be used to purchase a new ambulance that will be housed and maintained in Millbridge. The three towns will also use the ambulance currently in Cherryfield, where it will remain. Pinkham says he thinks the towns already have most of, if not all of the funding needed, and there is no expected increase in property taxes. We are going to try uh, hardest to make certain that we don't increase property taxes. But the thing is, they're going to be getting way more service than they have in the past and a lot quicker response time, so obviously it's going to cost a little bit more. As far as Millbridge's current ambulance service, Petit Manan, Pinkham says Millbridge will continue to fund them as they have been and that all EMTs have been offered positions within Bold Coast Ambulance Service. Officials from Millbridge, Cherryfield and Steuben will be convening on February 21st at 6 p.m. in the Millbridge Elementary School gym and are inviting residents from all three towns to voice their opinions there. We want to show complete transparency. We want to assure other people that we're doing everything we can to provide them with the best service we can. In Millbridge, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
in other news, legislation has been introduced that would add e-bikes to the electric vehicle rebate program in Maine. Efficiency Maine currently offers instant and mail-in rebates for qualifying battery-powered vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. Senator Maddie Dowertree of Brunswick introduced the bill and says, quote, we want to encourage more people to commute by e-bike instead of gas-powered vehicles. Gas-powered vehicles remain the highest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Maine. The measure now faces further action in committee. What do you think about those e-bikes and things like that? Have you ever done them before? My friend has one and she loves it. Really? Um, yeah. She doesn't have a car, so it definitely helps mm -hmm. fill that. And she got it used, so she feels yeah. lucky. I have a friend, too, that's getting ready to buy one for those same reasons. Doesn't have a car. Right. Um, really uh, faces some challenges in getting it. Yep. Uh, but this way, you know, she can save some money and still get around and do her things. I think they're great, and they're yeah. great for the environment. Right. And you can still pedal yeah. on them, so if you want to get your exercise, if you want to get someplace fast, you yeah. can do that, too. So. I tried one of those little e-scooters in a, in a big city one time. Those it, scare me. It didn't last long because I almost, I'm I almost of, died. Right. Going <laughs> Over the handlebars seems yeah. very easy on those. But yeah. hey, people love them. Kind of neat to see how things are going, though. Definitely. Yeah. Well, the time now is 6-11. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, people who take part in a special survey in Brewer can have a chance to help shape the city's future. But first, another check of our weather forecast. Looks like we could see a little rain and snow later on today. The highs will be near 37 degrees. Wintry mix and a little rain tonight with lows dropping down to around freezing. Tomorrow, yep, it's going to start off a little bit wet around here. But look at those temperatures. Highs around 50 degrees. Scooty Can Bloom, a full service custom designed florist, Main Street in Winter Harbor. We can deliver one of a kind, full color flower arrangements by custom floral designer, me, Pam. Delivering to Ellsworth and surrounding areas for any occasion. Please visit scootycanbloom.com or call 844 Scootic. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Cat Tracks Incorporated, Central Main Denture, John Baps Memorial High School, Natural Living Center, Rack Attack Basketball, and Silver Fox Automotive. So, if you're Robin Roberts, how do you pay forward the love to those who have shared so much love and kindness with you? This morning, get ready as Robin shares a surprise filled with love and gratitude with people who have no idea it's coming on GMA. Oversharing can be weird. How you doing, buddy? I'm more excited than a mosquito flying into a nudist colony. <laughs> Weekdays at 9 on ABC7. This week on The People's Court. The last person you want to sell your car to is family. Look at you now. Plus, suddenly his dog jumps out and bites me. Where did the dog bite you? He bit me in the left testicle. We're going to play your video right now. All this week at 4 on ABC7. is hoping to recruit Mainers to drill for precious metals near Pickett Mountain in Penobscot County, close to the Katahdin Woods and Waters National Monument. Wolfton Resources, based in Ontario, plans to offer workers as much as $100,000 a year as a starting salary. Working seven days on and seven days off in their project gets off as their project gets off the ground. Um, the gr or excuse me, that's an if. The company estimates the mining effort would create 272 jobs. However, some area residents have shared concerns about the mining process. Jeremy Willett, vice president of project development, says that Wolfton will follow Maine's strict reg regulations. It's not often you can find a literal brand new industry come into the state that could that you know is able to um, is able to operate while keeping, you know, uh, environmental management at its top tier of priority. According to Willette, the project still has a ways to go and is currently seeking rezoning approval from Maine's Land Use Planning Commission. He also says there will be opportunities for Mainers to voice their concerns before the project begins. One million dollars is going to a conservation project in Trenton thanks to a grant awarded through the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. It will fund the conservation of 216 acres of intertidal and freshwater wetlands and adjacent uplands in Trenton. A statement says coastal wetlands are vitally important in protecting communities from floods, filtering water, supporting recreation, and providing important habitat for fish and wildlife. 
despite their, despite their importance, there has been a steady loss of coastal wetlands. The acquisition will be managed by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife in partnership with the Frenchman Bay Conservancy. The city of Brewer is asking anyone who shops, lives, or works in Brewer to complete their consumer survey. It's a follow-up to a survey that was done a few years ago. The survey asks about shopping asked and about dining preferences. The information will help city officials and businesses with decisions about the future. We first ask about habits, uh, but then we also ask about um, preferences. So what's missing in Brewer? What, what are the businesses that aren't there that people would love to actually be able to have there? Uh, so all of that information is really important for us. Everyone who completes the survey will be entered into a random drawing for one of three prizes. Prizes include two tickets to one night of Queen at the Collins Center of the Arts, a, night, a one night stay for two in a suite at Hollywood Casino with $100 to spend at Hop's House 99 restaurant, or two tickets to a waterfront concert of your choice at Maine Savings Amphitheater in 2023. The survey can be found on the City of Brewer's website at brewermaine.gov. It's nice they're getting the local input from people. Yeah. You know, this is your chance to help shape the city, you know. I know. And I'm a Bangor resident, but it said shop or dine, so I guess I'll have to do that too because yeah. I go over to Brewer all the time. Yeah, Brewer's been making great strides in improving the waterfront and other things along I know. there. It's going to be exciting. The walking area is lovely. Yeah. All right, well, the time now is 6.16. After the break, we'll hear reactions to Tuesday's State of the Union by local policy and international affairs experts. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. Pat's Pizza in Holden is not just a restaurant that serves delicious food and pizza. They also have an adjacent party and event room. Consider having your birthday or office party at Pat's Pizza. They have indoor golf, a pro shop, and a beautiful nine-hole golf course. Pat's Pizza, Holden. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Coastal Auto Parts, Gracie's Aunt's Emporium, Katahdin Federal Credit Union, Katahdin General Store, LLC, Katahdin Hardware and Appliance, and Maine Heritage Timber. Welcome back, everyone. On Tuesday night, President Biden's State of the Union address drew reactions from both sides of the political aisle. Our David Ledford breaks it all down. There were several memorable moments during the State of the Union address, including heckles from members of the Republican Party and a focus on the domestic economy. During the address, Biden discussed the supply chain and Buy American policies. Kristen Vicasey, an associate professor at the University of Maine, Department of Political Science and School of Policy and International Affairs, explained what this could mean. Many of the policies that were uh, proposed in the State of the Union are uh, can be easily interpreted as trade protection in, in other names. In particular, the uh, Buy American policies that President Biden proposed um, will be very much seen as off-putting from the United States' uh, friends and allies. Mark Brewer, professor and interim chair at the University of Maine's Department of Political Science, says that despite vocal disapproval at times, there were clear signs of unity as well. There were some areas where we could see um, bipartisan support, and certainly the, the president and Speaker McCarthy seemed to um, have moments, at least, you know, where they had kind of, you know, kind of genuine engagement with each other, which um, that's a positive, I would say. Concerns around the Chinese spy balloon that was recently shot down were another topic at the address. Vacasey explained that while some feel Biden acted too late, 
there is more to be uncovered with the issue. In the speech, Biden said, if China threatens our sovereignty, we will act to protect our country. And we did. And that was right, referencing the spy balloon incident. We don't have enough technical details of what kinds of information was being gathered and the extent to which it was sensitive information in order to make the judgment of whether it was done too early or too late. David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. The time is now 6.20. Looks like we might see a little bit of moisture today. No big deal, though. I uh, know. It's not going to be as nice as yesterday, but yeah. after a sunny day like that, it makes sense. Hopefully you all have a good hair day despite. <laughs> so anyway, here's Devin with your forecast. Thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's a perfect gift for your Valentine. Alrighty, here we go. So we have a few alerts in effect, a winter weather advisory in effect until 9 a.m. Friday, and this is because of snow that will be moving in. We also have gale warnings in effect until 7 p.m. for your Friday. We're going to queue up one more alert right here because we are watching for another alert that is in effect right about in here in my hand is at and now right there is as I thought a gale watch is in effect so we might see that upgraded to a gale warning at some point that is also up through Friday at around 7 p.m. or so but for now we're looking pretty decent out there looking pretty quiet we're going to be watching for clouds that will be moving in throughout the daytime period all this right here off toward the west here's a system right here moving from the west going toward the east this will give us our first chance for rain and snow showers by about 6 p.m. tonight continuing as a wintry mix overnight as well and then it'll switch over to all rain, at least through the morning period, before it begins to taper off. So for now, we still have about 7 inches of snow on the ground in Bangor, 21 inches in Caribou. The northern ends of the state will add some, not so much further down to the south. They may add a little bit of snow, but that'll be about it. So future cast for today, increasing clouds will be the general idea. Literally by about 6, 7 o'clock or so, rain and snow moves in from the west. Going toward the east, switching over to all rain as we head towards Friday morning. And then by Friday afternoon, look what happens. Things start to calm down and maybe even some sunshine peeking out late in the day before it begins to set. So by about Friday afternoon and beyond, things will begin to calm down. So how much snow could we possibly see the better opportunities further off towards the north? We're around three, maybe up to six inches of snow possible in the, in the northern ends of the state. So Washington County could see up to three to four inches as well. Bangor about two inches or so with lesser amounts further down toward the south. But a good amount of water. This graphic takes into account the snowfall too, but it measures it, measures it in rain rainfall units and of course we had the rainfall too so up to three quarters of an inch of rain possible in some spots or just three quarters of an inch of water in general will be expected across the entire state wave heights not too bad at this point right around three to five feet but of course with the alerts along the coast i expect these wave heights to increase as we do proceed your forecast for today 37 degrees late afternoon rain and snow otherwise increasing clouds with the southeast breeze at about five miles per hour later on tonight 32 degrees that winter mix will switch over to all rain Rain. The southeast wind at about 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 50 degrees. I'll feel amazing. Morning rain showers, then mostly cloudy, maybe peaks of sunshine late in the day. The west wind at about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Maryland Monroe Spots. So some morning snow showers possible for the day on Saturday with highs in the lower 30s. Lower 40s on Sunday with a partly cloudy sky and mostly cloudy by Monday. Highs in the upper 30s. When you drive drunk, you don't know what you might lose. Freedom and reputation, financial stability, your life, and the lives of others. Please. 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 Don't drink and drive. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Central Theater for the Performing Arts, Coastal Auto Parts, Eli's Market, Engstrom's Auto Service, Ray's Plumbing and Heating, and Two Old Goats Antiques and Artisans. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American Icon is back on tour June 27th at Maine Savings Amphitheater. 
the multiple Grammy Award winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale Friday at 10 a.m. at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. I started smoking at age 16. I was scared when they found cancer in my lung. Lung cancer, still the deadliest cancer in Maine. But a new test can find it earlier when treatment is more successful. They were able to remove my cancer and I went back to work, but now I'm retired. If you're age 55 or older and smoke now or smoked heavily in the past, ask your provider if lung cancer screening is right for you. And learn more at ScreenMaine.org. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. The death toll continues to climb following Monday's earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. We've just gotten word it's up to 17,000 people now. The fight to try to reach survivors under the rubble grows more urgent with each passing hour. Fox News senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Palcott is in southern Turkey with the latest. Amid the horror of the aftermath of the Turkish earthquakes, glimmers of hope. A father, his daughter and his son all rescued from the rubble in northern Syria. A newborn baby carried from a site carefully in southern Turkey. As the body count builds, the death toll well over 12,000 now, morgues overfilled. Along with a last struggle as the window for survival closes. Desperate hours in the Turkish city of Gaziantep. Rescue workers using everything they have. Cranes, drills, picks, shovels, their bare hands to remove the rubble from the site of this collapsed apartment building hit by those earthquakes on Monday morning. Their hope is, the possibility is, there still could be somebody alive underneath all that mess. Time is running out. There had been sounds detected from beneath the pile. It's thought some 16 people are there, including a 17-year-old boy. His extended family waits. His mother pleads. Everyone should pray for us, and we need help. For nearly half a million people now left homeless in the region, there are more problems. We don't want blankets or clothing, but we have nowhere to shelter, nowhere to sleep. Turkish President Erdogan facing criticism as he made his first visit to the disaster zone. Our people must not worry. We won't allow any of our citizens to be left in the streets. Although his promise to rebuild all destroyed housing within a year rang bitterly hollow to many as they deal with scenes of desolation. It is early in the morning here in Gazniatep. Now uh, there is still no news about those trapped in the rubble behind us, but there is more activity by heavy machinery leading some here to fear this is becoming more of a recovery mission than a rescue mission, but there is still hope. Gazniatep, Turkey, Greg Palcott, Fox News. Well, meanwhile, Ukraine's president is asking the West for more advanced weapons ahead of a new Russian offensive. This comes as Moscow's forces uh, fire more missiles, as their forces fire more missiles at the eastern part of the country. Fox's Trey Yinkst with that story. This will be a change that the world has long needed. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky promised victory over Russia during a visit to the UK on Wednesday. In a speech before Parliament, Zelensky renewed calls for Western allies to supply his military with fighter jets. He says the combat aircraft is key to defending against missile and drone attacks. I appeal to you and the world with simple and yet most important words. Combat aircrafts for Ukraine. Wings for freedom. On Wednesday, the UK announced plans to provide fighter pilot training to Ukrainian troops. So far, Western leaders have been reluctant to send advanced fighter jets because they require considerable training and could escalate tensions between Russia and NATO, though Britain's government says it's now actively looking at whether it can supply the aircraft. We will continue to support Ukraine to ensure decisive military victory on the battlefield this year. Zelensky's visit comes as Moscow's forces ramp up their attacks ahead of the one-year mark of this war. Overnight, troops fired missiles at the city of Kharkiv, seen as a potential target of an upcoming Russian offensive. The best way to hasten prospects for real diplomacy is to keep tilting the battlefield in Ukraine's favor. This will help ensure that Ukraine has the strongest possible hand to play at a negotiating table when one emerges. Ukrainian officials want to increase their weapons supply by spring when the fighting is expected to ramp up. In Kyiv, Trey Inkst, Fox News. 
Body cam footage from Israeli troops capturing a violent raid on a West Bank refugee camp, with Israeli forces killing five Palestinian gunmen allegedly linked to Hamas. The Israeli military says the raid was meant to capture suspects who reportedly attempted a shooting at a restaurant in a Jewish settlement on the West Bank. The troops breaking down a gate and entering the, at the camp at night, claiming to search for the subjects. A gunfight erupted during the operation, leaving a trail of bullet marks, debris and blood. Hamas confirming that all five people were armed members of the group. The Palestinian president's office calling the raid a crime and are now urging the U.S. to push Israel to curb their attacks. Violence on the West Bank has ramped up recently. This bloodshed coming about a month after Israel's new right-wing government came to power. Well, the U.S. learning China's balloon surveillance program spans worldwide, including additional spy balloons which have breached U.S. airspace in the past. Fox's Kevin Cork has the latest from Washington. As urgency continues to grow over China on Capitol Hill, lawmakers in both the House and Senate are set to receive classified briefings Thursday on the Chinese spy balloon that traveled across the country last week. Many lawmakers looking for answers as to how the spy balloon was allowed to enter U.S. airspace. The Pentagon asserting that their response was not an intelligence failure. We re responded quickly and appropriately, and I think that they have a lot of explaining to do. The balloon used by the Chinese is part of a widespread global surveillance program that the Pentagon and U.S. intelligence have been observing for several years. India, Taiwan, Japan, the Philippines, and Vietnam, among other countries being targeted by China. Meanwhile, the Pentagon confirming these balloons have infiltrated U.S. airspace before. We are aware that there have been four previous balloons uh, that have gone over uh, U.S. territory. In South Carolina, the U.S. Navy continues its work to recover debris from the balloon. The Pentagon saying the favorable weather this week is allowing divers and explosive ordnance technicians to conduct underwater salvage and recovery efforts. We are getting more information uh, almost by the hour as we continue to work uh, to salvage the balloon. Secretary Blinken going on to say that the U.S. has already begun briefing U.S. embassies around the world with the information they are learning from the debris. In Washington, I'm Kevin Cork, Fox News. Chemicals found in products including fragrances, shampoo and soap may increase the risk of diabetes in women. Phthalates are chemicals that strengthen the durability of plastics and are used in many personal hygiene products. Researchers from the University of Mich Michigan examined more than 1,300 women over six years. They found that those exposed to chemicals have a 30 to 63 percent of hi a higher chance of developing type 2 diabetes, especially white women. I think there's concerns of a lot of other things that those are a problem causing chemical other than diabetes as well. Parabens and phthalates is yeah, kind of scary. So many chemicals and everything I know. these days, it's kind of, I don't know. I know, and the affordable option oftentimes, unfortunately, has those things in them. Yeah. All right, still to come here on the second half of our show, a local school district recently purchased snowshoes and masks for students and parents to have fun with after school. We'll get a glimpse of that and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop is now open in Newport. Our unique building is a converted 1800 single family home that we've given a new life to. A home for treasures, from antiques, collectibles, unique gifts, and so much more. Come make the rounds throughout the many rooms on all three floors as you wander back in time or find a unique gift that's perfect for that special someone or that hard to buy for a relative. So come visit us today. Leona May's Antique and Gift Shop, 147 Main Street, Newport. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Center Theater for the Performing Arts, Dexter Lumber, Hometown Health Center, Howard Insurance, Twin City Tile, and Urban Air Adventures. 
Bangor Floral is your perfect destination this February. Since 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful Valentine's Day gifts for almost 100 years. Featuring new colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets that have warmed hearts for generations. We also strongly support the Buy Local movement by purchasing directly from local farms and suppliers. Bangor Floral, 332 Harlow Street. Experience a flower shop like no other this February. If you think you're in love with where American Idol is now, I tell you the best is yet to come. Hey, you're going to Hollywood! Every year, our talent does get a little better because it brings people from all over. Do I think we've found the next big pop star this season? I think we've found the next top 10 pop stars. You've got the magic in you. American Idol season premiere February 19th on ABC and stream on Hulu. What are you going to sing today? You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Thursday, February 9th, 2023. It is also National Pizza Day. It's hard to imagine that a world that before World War II, I guess that's uh, when pizza wasn't really known around here, uh, outside of Italy or by Italian immigrants, of course, communities. Uh, I'm really blowing this. <laughs> Even though <laughs> flatbreads, what am I trying to say here? Okay. Even though they've been consumed back as far as the Egyptians, it's believed that pizza was invented in Naples. And now you're scrolling. Um, but in See, Naples, it Italy is a fast and affordable tasty meal for the working class, which what, makes what sense. What I was trying to say, we didn't have pizza before World War II. Which and, is crazy and then it to me. Came over here. I was sitting in yeah. Pat's Pizza in Orno the other day. Mm -hmm. I That's one of my favorite pizzas locally. And um, they have it's, they have those still those jukebox yeah, things in each there. table. Yeah. That's part of the appeal. Yeah. And it's crazy to think that people didn't have that before World War II. Yeah. So things I, have changed I love so the much. Pizza. Yeah. I like, what's your favorite pizza? What kind of pizza? Just a pepperoni. Just pepperoni. I think yeah. that's my go-to, With a root too. beer. Yeah, I like a lot, though. Yes, me too. Yeah. Okay, well, on this day in history, in 1943, the World War II Battle of Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. I was getting, I was getting yeah, there. Yeah. Tell and me there. <laughs> the South Pacific ended with an Allied victory over Japanese forces. And in 1964, the Beatles made their first live television appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show. That was also the year the G.I. Joe action figure was introduced at the American International Toy Fair in New York. And in 1969, the Boeing 747 flew for the first time. I saw yesterday, I think, was the 247 for 727. the first time. 727. No. No, the 247, because I saw a 727 <laughs> flew about this day, too. Okay. Yes, that's <laughs> what we just said. I meant a couple days ago, the 247. It's a different one. What's I'm, a 247? It's a plane. Is it? Never yeah. heard of it. Well, it's because the, I don't think they use it. It was like in the 30s or 40s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. One of the first domestic flights. All right. We're killing time here. Moving <laughs> on now. Today's birthdays include actor Joe Pesci, who is 79. Country Heck singer yeah. Garth Brooks is 61. Singer Carol King is 79. And this is also the birthday of trailblazing television journalist Roger Mudd, who passed away in 2021 at the age of 93. He was one of the big guys back when, like, uh, Cronkite and others were on the air. I don't know him, but I know Joe yeah. Pesci, and you I know love Joe him. Pesci. Yeah, so. <laughs> I feel I really I feel like I emanate Joe Pesci in a lot of ways sometimes, and that's when I'm being toxic. I can see that. <laughs> so <laughs> no, let's get into the forecast now. Here's Devin. Yeah. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Thursday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Marilyn Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's the perfect gift for your Valentine. All right, let's get things rolling out there this morning. A winter weather advisory is up for the northern ends of the state until about 9 a.m. because of accumulating snow. That make roads a little bit slippery from time to time as well. A few advisories also further down to the south and west. We'll adjust this map just a bit so we can see some of these advisories here. It may not pop up, but there's a small crowd advisory that we're seeing there. And I think that spot right there might be a gale watch that is up right there. So we have gale warnings. We have winter weather advisories, both of these advisories that are up this morning. But for now, we are quiet out there this morning. We're watching clouds. I'll be moving in from the west to the east throughout the daytime period. So increasing clouds 
will be the general idea as our system is going to be moving in from the west going toward the east. We see it right about in there and now, and so there's not a whole lot just yet, but by later this evening, like literally by about 6 o'clock or so, we'll experience some rain and snow showers so late in the day before we enter the night period and now once she mix gets going. So increasing clouds for its day, literally by about 6 o'clock or so, that rain and snow chance begins. Switching over to all rain with a few leftover rain showers as we proceed through Friday morning. So the winds will not be a huge deal just yet, but they will be increasing, especially with our system moving in. So Friday could be a windy day, especially along the coast. Your early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period. So overall, today we're fine. We're pretty much dry, but increasing clouds throughout the day. Again, by 6 p.m., the precipitation starts. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma? A little bit of rain. A good movie day. Uh, every day is a good day for a movie day, good right? Good point, yeah. good point. Okay, well, students and parents, these kids got outside, so good for them. They yeah. weren't having a movie night. They enjoyed some time outdoors during a family snowshoe walk at Patricia A. Duran School yesterday afternoon. The elementary school brought back its popular family snowshoe event from last year. Principal Melissa Davis says they used grant funding to purchase many pairs of snowshoes to make sure there were enough for everyone. She says they added a new educational element to the walk this year, though. One of my secretaries had the idea that it might be fun to do a story walk. Um, and so we thought we're always pushing literacy and um, this would be a fun way to get kids outside and playing, but also reading a story too, which the best of both worlds. Principal Davis says the walk is a great opportunity to get the school community together for some outdoor fun. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah they had a good, a good night for it too. The sunset was really pretty. Yeah. All right, still to come this morning, Tyler Cruz will have your latest with sports. We'll be right back. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Saliba's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flat beds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Guilford Hardware, Kimball Insurance, LLC, Loring Job Corps, McCusick Petroleum Company, Prouty Auto Body, and Rowell's Garage and Car Wash. The Husson University Eagles take on the Maine Maritime Academy Mariners in a basketball doubleheader this Saturday, starting at 1 on ABC7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us this Sunday. The Kelsey brothers will be the first pair of brothers to play against each other in the Super Bowl. And then up in Orno, two brothers will be sharing the Maine football sidelines starting this fall. Brewer senior Jackson Gross signed his national letter of intent to play for Maine in front of family and coaches at a ceremony on Tuesday. He will join his older brother, David, who became a starting offensive lineman this year as a sophomore with the Black Bears. That's marking the first time the two shared the field since 2019 when they were Bucksport Golden Bucks. Jackson says playing for Maine is a long time coming and that it's a blessing to be able to do it with his older brother. Uh, it's truly a blessing, you know. I've, it's been my lifelong, uh, my lifelong goal of being a black bear, and ever since I was six years old, I've been going to games, want to represent my home state. It was truly a blessing my freshman year to share the field with him, so to do it again, I just can't wait. All right, as for what the brothers will bring to the Black Bears as a unit, David believes that their natural grit will help them succeed. As two longtime football players and wrestlers, that toughness is just in their genes. 
But I think Mainers are honestly, they're just built different when it comes to putting in hard work and not, not avoiding it. Um, I think that's something that us, we're going to bring together on the field um, and just represent our last name. And I think we also, we also bring a chance for these main kids to, that want to continue to play football but don't know how to, to look and see that it is possible. Right, should have interviewed the baby there. Let's stay with the Black Bears right now, and we will head to the ice. Maine hockey is coming off of another weekend split. They fell to BU on Friday and then took an overtime victory over Merrimack on Sunday. And that win Sunday pushed their total win total to a dozen with six Hockey East victories, five of them against ranked teams, and they've already surpassed their, surpassed their conference win total from last season. Coach Ben Barr's first season in Maine. And if you ask them what's changed, it has a lot to do with the mentality that they bring to the ice each day. The difference is that we have a, a standard work ethic now, and that keeps us competitive. And then when you're competitive, you, you get a little belief, and, you know, like, and, and good things happen. A lot of it's the culture. I mean, we, we've grown quite a bit as a team. I mean, I think uh, last year, even earlier on this year, and falling uh, down two with 10 minutes to go could have been a different result for us, but... I think that shows how much we've grown so far this year. All right, now with just eight games left on the schedule, Maine is in an interesting spot. They are currently in eighth place in the standings. Boston College is right ahead of them, and there are a few teams within striking distance right below them too. But they're not too worried about any of that. They're just confident that if they focus on their game, quote, good things will happen. We're just, we're, we're again just trying to increase our standards, build our standard, our culture every day. And if we do that, like, good things will happen. Whether we finish 7th, 8th, 10th, 4th, you know, like, we want to be playing our best hockey going into the playoffs because that's a one and done scenario. All right, on Tuesday, the Maine Basketball Hall of, F Hall of Fame announced its 2023 class of inductees, and they are welcoming 17 individuals into the hall this summer. The induction ceremony will be Sunday, August 20th at the Cross Insurance Center. We can't fit all 17 names on the list, but Husson men's hoops coach Warren Caruso will be inducted into the hall in August. He has been with Husson since 1999 and has led the Eagles to 14 conference championships. Also on there is Jamie Russell, Central Girls basketball coach, who has over 400 career wins in his career at PCHS, PVHS, and now Central. Coach Scott Grafham from Madomic Valley and Oxford Hills is in, as well as the 1975 Foxtroft Academy boys basketball team. They finished a perfect 22-0. And then Todd Hanson, the four-year UMaine guard from Waterville, is also on there. And you can find the full list on the Maine Basketball Hall of Fame's website that is on your screen. All right, let's stay on the basketball subject now. After the floor was correctly put back on at the Cross Insurance Center, Maine men's basketball hosted top-ranked Vermont. And that's where we begin our hoops coverage. Black Bears looking for their fourth win against a number one team this season. Third win against a number one team this season. First half, it was where we'll start. Robin Duncan is going to find Dylan Penn. Nice post move here. He's going to get the hook shot to fall. And then it's going to be Jaden Clayton for Maine. He's driving, finds at a target in the lane, spins, and he gets the two to fall. Kellen Tynes now for Maine. He's going to get it to target. He converts again on the inside, but Vermont was too much for the Black Bears on Wednesday. Some great ball movement here is going to find Matt Verretto. He's going to finish it off. The Catamounts would go on to win to a 74-65 to victory. All right, up to Orono we go. A huge matchup in B North as Old Town visits the Red Riots. First quarter, Old Town is on the break. Carson Ellis up to Brendan Mahaney, out to Braden Brown. He is money from the corner. Yotes up early. Still in the first, Pierce Walston here with the pump fake, gets the defender to fly by, and he knocks this one down. Great move from the junior. Second quarter, Alex Fernandes is going to intercept this pass, bring it up the court. He'll pull up from mid-range, stops, pops, and drains it. And Old Town would just keep on running all night long. Here's Fernandes up to Gabe Gifford on the break. Some jelly right there on the lay-in, gets the friendly roll. Coyotes win a big one, 54-41. Let's head to a Class B and C battle here over in Bucksport. Golden Bucks taking on the Eagles of George Stevens. First quarter, Solorio sizes up the triple here, and then he is going to splash that thing home from the top of the key. Then for the Bucks, it's Evan Donnell. He's going to get it at the top. Good footwork in the lane, and he's going to get that floater to fall. Here he is again for the Bucks. He's going to get it. 
Take a couple dribbles and a beautiful no-look pass to Jake Williams inside for the bucket. Eagles the other way now. Patrick Dagan, he's going to come up with this steal, and then he is going to take it all the way home and finish with the left for two. This one was back and forth right at the buzzer of the first quarter. Here's Donald with a nice step back, drains the three ball. Bucks win it in overtime, 51-48. to All right, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. When Cat Tracks in LaGrange wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Cat Tracks in LaGrange is your dealer for Hewitt Lifts and Rolodox with the goal to get you on the lake faster than anyone else. Now what? You say it when things go wrong. At Prudential, we think you should say it when things go right, too. Like when you score your dream job, sell your business, or discover she's smart, really smart. Now what? Here's what. You connect with Prudential's rock-solid team serving over 50 million people with investment, insurance, and retirement know-how. Who's your rock? Visit Prudential.com or speak to an advisor today. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Coastal Auto Parts, Comfort Shoes and More, Gilman Electrical Supply, Huff Power Sports, Kwong Lee Restaurant, and r &K Variety. The law. I've been a judge for 40 years. Don't waste my time. If you break it. You didn't pay rent. You'll pay for it. It's my show. Nobody cares whether you have a personality or not. Weeknights at 5 on ABC7. Welcome back, everyone. Well, good news for Eagles fans, as there is at least one prediction that they will emerge victorious in the Super Bowl. Crockett, a California sea lion from the Wildlife World Zoo and Aquarium in Litchfield Park, Arizona, predicts that the birds will take home their second Super Bowl win this Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. Cardinals kicker Matt Pratter tagged along for Crockett's prediction, tossing two water toys into the pool, one Chiefs colored and the other's Eagles. The rest was up to Crockett and the sea lion ultimately swimming back with its pick for the championship. The Philadelphia Eagles tune in Sunday right here on, uh, well, we're on ABC 7 right now, but it was going to be on Fox 22. We're on both. Are we on both? Oh, we yes. are on both. Okay, yep. never mind. To see if Crockett's prediction for Super Bowl 57 was correct or not. I think I need to go back to sleep. It's okay. It's one hey, of those days hey, where. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. If if you need a if you need a future prediction after Sunday, I've heard Crockett is doing a crystal ball yeah. and tarot card readings. I predict so, we'll get a few inches of snow tonight. Yeah. Let's see if Devin Biggs will correct uh, correct that or not because I'm making <laughs> lots of mistakes today. That's okay. Here's Devin. Thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Maryland Monroe Spas. Sign up for your VIP spa membership today for exclusive members-only services and benefits. It's a perfect gift for your Valentine. Alrighty, here we go. So we have a few alerts in effect, a winter weather advisory in effect until 9 a.m. Friday, and this is because of snow that will be moving in. We also have gale warnings in effect until 7 p.m. for your Friday. We're going to queue up one more alert right here because we are watching for another alert that is in effect right about in here in my hand is at and now right there is as i thought a gale watch is in effect so we might see that upgraded to a gale warning at some point that is also up through friday at around 7 p.m or so but for now we're looking pretty decent out there looking pretty quiet we're going to be watching for clouds that will be moving in throughout the daytime period all this right here off toward the west here's a system right here moving from the west going toward the east this will give us our first chance for rain and snow showers by about 6 p.m tonight continuing as a wintry mix overnight as well and then it'll switch over to all rain, at least through the morning period, before it begins to taper off. So for now, we still have about 7 inches of snow on the ground in Bangor, 21 inches in Caribou. The northern ends of the state will add some, not so much further down to the south. They may add a little bit of snow, but that'll be about it. So futurecast for today, increasing clouds will be the general idea. Literally by about 6, 7 o'clock or so, rain and snow moves in from the west. Going toward the east, switching over to all rain as we head towards Friday morning. 
And then by Friday afternoon, look what happens. Things start to calm down and maybe even some sunshine peeking out late in the day before it begins to set. So by about Friday afternoon and beyond, things will begin to calm down. So how much snow could we possibly see the better opportunities further off towards the north? We're around three, maybe up to six inches of snow possible in the, in the northern ends of the state. So Washington County could see up to three to four inches as well. Bangor about two inches or so with lesser amounts further down toward the south. But a good amount of water. This graphic takes into account the snowfall too, but it measures it, measures it in rainfall units. And of course, we had the rainfall too. So up to three quarters of an inch of rain possible in some spots or just three quarters of an inch of water in general will be expected across the entire state. Wave heights not too bad at this point, right around three to five feet. But of course, with the alerts along the coast, I expect these wave heights to increase as we do proceed. Your forecast for today, 37 degrees, late afternoon rain and snow, otherwise increasing clouds by the southeast breeze at about 5 miles per hour. Later on today, 32 degrees, that winter mix will switch over to all rain, the southeast wind at about 25 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 50 degrees, I'll feel amazing. Morning rain showers, then mostly cloudy, maybe peaks of sunshine late in the day, that west wind at about 25 miles per hour. Alrighty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Maryland Monroe Spots. So some morning snow showers possible for the day on Saturday with highs in the lower 30s, lower 40s on Sunday with a partly cloudy sky and mostly cloudy by Monday highs in the upper 30s. Napa knows how to stay warm and with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts has just what you need to prepare for any outdoor activity. Lightweight, durable and designed for comfort, Milwaukee's heat on demand jackets and hoodies are the perfect cold weather gear. No matter the job, no matter the weather, you'll be ready for anything. And while you're here, sign up for Napa Rewards. You'll save more each time you shop. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Branch Pond Computers, Coastal Auto Parts, Complete Tire Service Incorporated, Disconnected Tattoo and Art Company, First National Bank, and Loring Job Corps. Bath remodeling was revolutionized in this garage in 1984 when three brothers created the iconic bath fitter tub over tub process. A breakthrough then, the industry standard now for beautiful baths without the mess, stress, or high cost. A better way from bath fitter means precise measurement, the highest quality acrylic, perfect preparation, and watertight installation backed by a lifetime warranty. Bath fitter, it just fits. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. Harris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquis region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. I have been trying out for this show since I was 15 years old. Never give up on your dreams. Best is yet to go. You're going to Hollywood. Are you ready? Attending this year's Super Bowl in Glendale, Arizona may require taking out a loan. Round trip flights to Phoenix average $500, according to travel app Hopper. Those who are looking to head to the big game from Philadelphia on Saturday and come back Tuesday may have to pay more than $6,000. Hotel prices in the area are also soaring, with an average of $600 per night. The average cost of a ticket for the Super Bowl is $6,434 on Vivid Seats, while tickets, while tickets on Ticketmaster's best seats section are going for $40,000. That's just crazy. I'll stay home and watch it on TV. I don't. How know? is there a demand for that? I, I can't know. comprehend. Okay, we'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22. Have, Have a good a, day. Have a great day. <laughs> Do you own a timeshare? At first, maybe it seemed like a great investment, but then you realized a lot of the promises made to you were simply not true. A little later, you started receiving the monthly maintenance fees and additional associated bills they failed to mention when you signed the agreement. 
and now their fees keep rising. Your times to actually use the timeshare keep shrinking, and the resort has no interest in letting you out of the agreement. Your vacation dream has turned into a timeshare nightmare, an overwhelming, never-ending financial obligation that will fall on your children after you're gone, and it seems as if there is no way out. Well, here's some great news. There is a way out. The timeshare exit hotline has helped hundreds of people just like you, desperate people who thought they were stuck in this burden forever. Although most professionals in the timeshare industry are legitimate, there are those that use aggressive, sometimes even misleading sales tactics to try and trick innocent people into signing their lives away. We've heard many stories of people who have been lied to and others who were kept in a room for over 10 hours, not provided water or anything to eat, pressured until the...